Hello everybody! I'm Raphael Perry and it's time for some more Battle Brothers with the Legends mod this time. Now, when I was next going to start up Battle Brothers I was contemplating doing another non-Legends run, but the Legends mod updated last night, so I thought why not give it a try? And given that it's just updated, I think I'm going to take the opportunity to show off just how ridiculously overpowered the Crusader is. The Crusader is remarkably similar to the Lone Wolf Origin. However, the Lone Wolf Origin you play as a knight. The Crusader you play as a religious crusader with a ridiculously overpowered sword. And he doesn't have the uh, five or six levels the Hedge Knight starts with. But he does have some ridiculous ridiculously overpowered perks which then, due to the new way the Legends mod handle things, become available for everyone. Also, because I've played quite a bit of Battle Brothers in the last few months, I'm not going to read all the flavour text of everything when it, if it starts repeating. But I'll have some fun with it anyway. So, pure of heart. Cannot recruit outlaw backgrounds. Of course, pious backgrounds will cost less. Also, he's more likely to find monks now, apparently. Uh, strict Sermons. Anyone you fight with gains the Fortified Mind perk. Which we'll get to in a bit. Avatar, of course, is a single player character. If he dies, the campaign ends. That's okay. We don't want this flag. That looks hideous. This looks great for a glorious crusader. Um, in fact, we'll even call them the Glorious Crusade. If we can fit it in. We can! Excellent! Now, normally I like to play on veteran combat difficulty, but the way that the Legends mod handles combat and everything in general, it's better to keep it on beginner for now. Legends Perk Trees. This is... tricky. So the Legends mod now handles Perk Trees very differently. You know how in the last version they had things slightly unique. Well, now they're even more unique. Also, I like my settlements to be in a multiple of six. Thank you very much. There we go. Let's dive right in. And of course, because it's the Legends mod, the load screen at the beginning will take a bit longer. So yeah, um, what the Legends modders have done, and I actually dislike this in a way, because uh, in the previous version or two, they began pigeonholing certain careers into very specific roles by limiting the perks available to them and giving them some very specific ones. Uh, I, I think mainly their, their noblewoman, who was like the nobleman, was very archery focused to begin with, but then they actually started taking away some of the more close combat oriented traits like, um, you know, battle you know, Battle Forge or Forge in Battle, whatever it is, the, the incredibly good armor one or Colossus or things like that, right? Now they've gone even further in that direction to the point where the perk trees are now generated randomly for recruits, but within a set value based on their career. So it's getting even more specific and you now need to look at the perk tree in advance and go, okay, how can I build this person? Because a lot of options might not be available to you at all. There'll be a lot of, it'll be about half the perks will be generic, then you'll get some career specific ones and then you get a few of the unique ones. And that's where a few problems come in. Anyway, let's get on with the crusade. The bishop had told you the world was dying due to the sins of man. But the end of days is upon us. The Dark Ones come, and only the furious justice of piety can hold it back. I'm sure, if I could be can, can hold them back. Since we have journeyed across the lands to find the root of the infection, to stem. Ah, since then you have journeyed across the land to find the root of the infection, to stem the tide of the plague. The more of the world you see, the worse it looks. The corruption is spreading, and you followed its tendrils back to its source. Here, in these lands, you will find the cause. Your faith 
cannot falter, for you bear the torch into the yearning darkness. The day of reckoning approaches. You must finish your preparations. Just like someone must finish this sentence with a full stop. To arms! So. We start by a castle. That's excellent. Humbert the Crusader. Well, we can't call him that. That is ridiculous. Um, Humbert, Humbert is a horrible character. Let's go with a nice name like Marius. The Crusader. Marius is short-sighted, loyal, fear of Noah's will after... Oh, God. It's Legends mod all over again. Restart time. So, yeah. The main problem with Legends mod is that you... Because of the uniqueness of the perk trees and having main special characters, you just want to keep restarting to not get really crippling perks. And let's see what we got this time. We're going to get shit colours on the helmet, aren't we? No? Okay, nice. Um, okay. Loyal. Oh, we got nothing. But okay, nothing bad. And what have we here? So, the problem with the Crusader is obviously same as the Hedge Knight, getting stunned. The Crusader has a perk called Composure, which grants immunity to being stunned. We're going to take that right away. However, I've seen this perk turning up on the perk trees of recruits as well, and that's not a good thing. In fact, it's pretty bad. Also, the Crusader appears to be heavily specialised, but he doesn't have the same sort of resolve the Hedge Knight can have, even though he needs a lot of it. So, he's allowed one person, basically a squire. Knight and squire, right? And also we have this sash for carrying stuff in. And some bandages, not that he'll ever get to apply them himself. Camfest! What, who can we hire here? We have Edelbert. So we have um, unknown character perks, unknown character traits. We probably can't afford to splash out massively on healing, but... Because we are playing the Crusader, let's set a few ground rules. Number one, we will not avoid missions. We take the contracts. We take every contract as we come across it. We come to a town, if they have a contract, we take a contract regardless of the amount of skulls. We are brave. We are fearless. In the pursuit of justice, we may occasionally force march without rest. Although, obviously, our companions may require rest. My goodness. Uh, some kind of really bad hacksaw. It'll bit. Hmm. Let's go, go with Hartbert the Builder. And see what we've let ourselves in for. So, uh, okay. Might be a good company standard bearer. So as we see here, the perk tree has been randomised. There will be some... Okay, lookout. Increases vision. So it's good for ranged combat. Back to basics. Um, mm, this character takes damage while fleeing. We have a chance to rally. Okay. Bags and belts. Recover would be good for a standard bearer. Let's take that. Oh, he's not level 2 yet. We want to start getting him some equipment. Obviously, that, wow, that is expensive. That's not. And we don't want that shield. That is an ugly shield pattern. It is not good for us. So what we do for him, is we give him a spear, and his duty is to stand behind our knight and spear wall away a few attackers so he won't get surrounded too much. Now, off into the wilderness we go in search of adventure. As you leave Camfest, the talk is of the training hall. Each mercenary claims to be more skillful than the next and will prove it in the training hall. Some claim they are more skilled than the trainer himself. As you walk, Hartbert the Builder says, each time we come here, I talk to the trainer. It don't take much to train. The weight of your body and some sticks is enough. 
I bet we can train ourselves and save some coin. Whether a seasoned veteran or a green recruit, there's always something new to learn. Anyone assigned to train has a chance to get a plus 20% increase in experience points on their next combat. That's incredibly immersion breaking, by the way. Time and having highly skilled teachers on the grounds increases the chances of successfully learning something new. There's always a slight chance someone can be injured. Training grounds can be upgraded by purchasing an upgrade set in local markets for an outrageously extortionate price. Upgraded grounds reduce the risk of accidents from a, a minimum of 5% to 1% and give the chance of a permanently... of a permanent skill increase. Right, well for now, we are seeking out wickedness. My race for Crusader will not allow the evil ones to live. Of course, first he must find evil in need of vanquishing. Good grief, where is it? Oh, there's something up there. Well, very well then. Thither we shall go. Nice old word, Viva. Doesn't see as much use these days as it used to. Nice to get it back into circulation again, even if it is only momentarily. And here we are. Neufal. What need have they of our services? Ooh, an established village. Nice. Ah, oh, good. Two contracts. And first of all, we will fix our crusader so he doesn't look rubbish. We don't want this horrible foot footballer's haircut from the 90s. It just looks naff. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There we are. And you. Yeah. Two tasks, you say? Two tasks it is. Harold the Guildmaster angrily shakes his head. Brigands have been tearing up these parts for far too long. I sent a lad, Alric's son, to go find him, and you know what? Only his head came back. Of course, the idiot brigands sent one of our own to deliver it. We captured him and uh, <laughs> interrogated him. So now we know where they are. The man leans back, peddling his thumbs over one another in thought. Oh, I don't have the men, but I do have the crowns. What well, say I slip some your way and you slip a sword in their general directions? Absolutely, these villains must be slaughtered. He nods. Oh, you look able, so I'm willing to pay quite a bit. You'll be paid 80 crowns in advance, another 300 when the job is done. What do you say? Absolutely. We're not doing this for the money. We're doing this for the glory of the gods. Off we go. Now, as you approach Noifan, all turn, thoughts turn to the barber. Life on the road makes it hard to keep beard and hair in check, and everyone is looking forward to a trim. As you walk, Hartbert the Builder says, You know, being a barber ain't so hard. We. Uh... That wasn't his voice, was it? We chop up more difficult things every day. I was asking my barber about it last time and he showed me some tricks. I bet with a chair and some scissors I could at least keep the air from getting mad together. We now have another camping skill. And northeast we shall go. Oh, it's in a swamp. This is going to be horrible. Oh well. We shall not be daunted by a little mire. Also, if we arrive at night, we fight at night. Our crusader does not fear the darkness. We are the flame, and the darkness shall fear us. <laughs> I think you all know where that comes from, don't you? Oh, I've got to play some more Darkest Dungeons sometime soon. Alright, so they're over there. They're wanting to come out of the swamp, and we're wanting to not let them. Why, this is perfect. Could you go there? You did. That's excellent. Now let's just rush you up to there and stand ready to murder them. 
spear out and hope you don't get killed when they come swarming around. So, let's take a look at the Crusader's equipment. He has a closed flat top helmet. Generic equipment, not too special, very good starting gear. Here's the Crusader's armor at 160 body armor. Maximum fatigue minus 10, it's pretty decent, especially for starting gear. Then he has the Crusader sword, which is broken as hell. This is a two-handed sword. It's got the two-handed overhead strike, the two-handed split, the two-handed swing, the two-handed split shield, and the one-handed slash. Even if this sword has lower values than a two-handed sword, the ability to make cheap, quick light attacks with it, or a big heavy hit, uh, makes it go from beyond versatile to incredibly potent. Furthermore, they claim to have given him more shield related perks, which is great, but they've given him a ridiculously overpowered two handed sword, which we're about to use. Like that. And we'll wait for another one to come close. And then we'll go for a kill. Oh, close enough. Oh, nice. We even got a spear kill. We're going to step down to there and ram our spear into him. And back up to nowhere. Okay, yeah, swampy ground, I forgot. Alright, we're going to hop to there. Okay, we're not going to hop to there. Fine. And we will allow our lone enemy to flee, even though he had a nice shield we could have used. That's okay. It's not all about the money or the equipment. Although we do have some nice new equipment. Okay, so now that he has gained a level... My god, that is painful. Keep that Militia Spear, man. You're going to need it. Ah. Oh. All right, so we're going to take recover because he would be a good banner bearer, but he doesn't have access to the horn perk to actually rally the troops. That makes him a much less effective banner bearer. That's the kind of thing we have to look out for now in the Legends mod. It's a problem. But it's okay, let's return triumphantly to the town, dragging our muddy, swamp-filled boots with us. As the company takes a break, you decide to address the men. Brothers, I don't want everyone to know the Glorious Crusade are not just cutthroats and errand boys. In fact, I do want everyone to know that we are not just cutthroats and errand boys, but skilled fighters of the First Order. Word of our deeds must spread, so that merchants and noblemen are begging us to take their contracts. We want allies, because it's one of the easiest ones to get. Then we could try and get the company up to like maybe three or four men, you know. I do like the fact that Legends now has a half a dozen company size objective. It's a little more achievable given their company size restrictions, currently we can't have more than two. You return to Neufarn and talk to Harold the Guildmaster. The details of your journey are simple. You killed for brigands. He nods, smiling tersely, before handing over your payment as agreed upon. Good work, men. Those brigands have given us plenty of trouble, and we have been given 300 crowns. But where our duty here is not yet done, there is more that must be done for this small settlement. That's a nice shield for our non-standard bearer. You find Harold the Guildmaster reading a scroll. He throws the paper at you and asks you to read off the names. The handwriting is difficult, but not more so than the names themselves. You stop and apologize, stating you are not from these parts. The man nods and takes the scroll back. It's alright, Cell Sword. 
If you were wondering, those are the names of men, women and children who have passed in the last week. The last week? There were a lot of names on that list. The man seems to read you somberly. I, we are in a bad way. So many lives lost. We believe this to be the work of foul creatures, beasts beyond our ken. Obviously we'd like you to go and find them and destroy them. Would you be interested in such a task, mercenary? Absolutely. He opens the palm of his hands. The palms of his hands? The palm of his hands? He has two hands. I'm tight on crowns, so before you ask, this is all I have right now. You're to receive 410 crowns when the contract is done. We accept your quest. Well, it's more of a contract. It's a quest, damn it, says Marius. Lolling around town in a bored stupor, you'll find yourself at the Fletcher's shack. A few of the Fletchers are toiling away at some dozen arrows and bolts. Their movements almost hypnotic. One of them notices you staring and takes an opportunity to begin a conversation. You nod your head like a trained animal as he prattles on and on and you focus solely on his work. This too he notices and the droll chat turns to an impromptu lesson. Before you know it, he's finished his work and your head is full of bus full to bursting with facts about feathers and shafts. Arrows, bolts, little rocks and big rocks, the ammunition of war. Keep the company stocks full between battles by assigning some members of the company to the tasks of making ammunition. Ammunition fabrication only occurs while camped. The more people assigned, the more ammunition is crafted. The fletching tent can be upgraded by purchasing a craft in cart from a settlement merchant. They always like 5,000 to 9,000 gold, it is insane. We aren't going to be able to afford anything like that anytime soon. An upgraded tent has a 15% increase in production speed. Additionally, there's a chance that ammunition of disposable throwing, throwing kind will be crafted. Fletching has been unlocked at the camp, but more importantly, our quest awaits. Some form of wildlife in this direction has been responsible for great loss of- Hey! Hello, spiders! Some Webknechts, of course. Four of them, to be exact. Oh! We fight on a nice flat plateau, because plateaus are flat. Alright, I want you there. Spear out. You can go to here and try and kill two with your ridiculously overpowered sword! And now we have trouble. Where's this one going to go? He goes there, yeah. Spearman, you'll have to do on your own for a little while, and you're only on your own, and a one-man shield wall basically doesn't exist. Um, break free to get rid of the web problems. Ah. So that's another thing. A two-handed weapon and the ability to break out of a web and make a quick attack anyway. The versatility alone makes that sword too powerful. Right. Gotcha. And can I get out? I can. Excellent. And we're going to get webbed like nearly every turn. Hartbert, you're a good man. Now come here and free your master. Don't have the points. Okay. He alone cast aside the burden. You know what? It's gone. Let it go. It's not our foe. Oh, we should rename Marius. Back to Neufern. That was a we must rename Namius. Marius and not Namius? Namius, yes! We should hire a Namius when we get the opportunity. Speaking of opportunities, we do. We can't increase the company size until we get to level 4. So let's see what we can do. Uh, so these are all standards. We have Bloody Harvest, plus 10% chance hit of all area of effect attacks. Again, geared towards two-handed sword use, which is uh, highly in conflict with the more powerful Shield Bash True Believer. Lesser men cower and flee, but you are unassuaged in your commitment. Allies fleeing or dying no longer lowers this character's morale. That would be really good for him. Smackdown. Use the size and strength to bully your way into the prime position. 
knock back any opponent on an attack where you have more health and fatigue from them. That sounds like an unhold kind of thing. Uh, onslaught. Moving with off-putting speed, fainting, poking, battering and catching your opponents off guard. Grants a 50% chance to apply daze on every hit of any weapon when your initiative and fatigue are higher than that of your opponent. Uh, steadfast getting hit by regular attacks doesn't cause a loss of fatigue anymore. Attacks that specifically target fatigue are unaffected. Okay, so what have we down here? We have rebound. Also, look. Automatically gets fortified mind. So relentless. I think that's a core one now. Uh, more, more tools to be carried. Push it. Shield back costs twenty five percent less fatigue. Um, knockback skill includes damage against armor. Okay, we have second wind, which is bonkers. Company size, shield expert. Also. Characters don't get all the weapon specializations out, they just get some of them. Uh, again, this is very random. We have uh, Battle Heart. Battle Heart! Wade in for thick of battle, dodging blades from behind and above, aware of all around you at the heart of it. So basically, Jon Snow equals immune to arrows bullshit from the Battle of the Bastards. Being surrounded no longer. Oh, yeah, just drop down to one knee and it means all the arrows coming directly down from above you will miss because they'll fly over your head. They're coming straight down! Bloody idiots. Being surrounded no longer affects this character's defences at all. Upgraded version of Underdog, immune to Backstabber. But Underdog is like at a... No, no, it's on the same tier. I would hope that Battleheart means you can't get Underdog on the same tier. Because to randomly generate both would be redundant. Being on the same tier but being better is bad. Forceful swing, so he's all about the AoE attacks when we get full force. The weight of his armor factors into his damage. Return the favor. When active, is a 50% chance to stun any opponent missing of a melee attack against this character in retaliation. Okay. Immunity and resistance is still apply. More tools can be carried. Favored enemy. Ah, so we have favored enemy perk. Favored enemy perks which um, increase the more of that enemy kind you kill. The Crusader gets lots of anti-undead favoured enemy perks, but they are available against other things as well. We have Berserk, we have Battleforged, of course. So, we've got a lot of big cleaving, swinging sword and axe type skills for two-handed weapons. And, oh yeah, they divided two-handed swords and one-handed swords into separate weapon masteries, but not for any of the other two-handed weapons, for some reason. Uh, Sundering Strikes, Rex Armor, Last Stand. Yep, yep, yep. His defense goes up as he takes damage. Uh, he has to be below half health for this to start factoring in. Inspiring Presence. Um... See, the, the Legends perks are so good that it's almost worth just taking them, just to see how it pans out. Hold the line. Um, okay. More tools. Battle flow. Can opponent reduce his current fatigue? Okay. That's rather sort of vampiric, isn't it? And stalwart. Passive moves. Okay, yeah, that's basically an upgraded version of... Um, what do you call it? The one that used to be down here that isn't here for this bloke. Alright, so where do we want to go with this? We have Ridiculously Overpowered Two-Handed Sword from Hell, which should be banned from the game completely because it's just broken. And we have a lot of nice shield-based skills. When are we going to be able to get him a one-handed weapon and a shield? God alone knows. Okay. So let's try to avoid weapon or shield-based perks for a few levels and get nice things like Steadfast instead. That being said, Steel Brow is rather good for any frontliner. So now that we've established that, oh that is golden. There we go. Let's head back for our reward. And then at some point I'll be looking to stop the episode, because I 
haven't been keeping track of time too much, but I've been going for about half an hour now. Harold the Guildmaster is hosting a birthday party when you enter his room with a giant dead spider and fling the corpse across the floor. Its bristly hairs hiss as they scratch across the stone, and its eight legs scuttle upside down like some furniture of horror, and it strays sideways and pops off the corner of a bookshelf and flops onto its toes and prongs there, as though ready to pounce. That's an incredible throw. Chaos breaks out as everyone screams and runs out the door or bails from the nearest open window, a litter of colourful confetti playfully twirling in their wake. The townsman stands alone amongst the empty space and purses his lips. Truly, sellsword, was that necessary? You nod and tell him that hiring you was necessary, and that paying you will still be very necessary. The man shakes his head and gestures with a false donkey tail to the corner of the room. Your satchel's over there with 410 crowns, as, as agreed on. Oh, sorry, I've lost his voice again. Oh, it was kind of like that, wasn't it? Very nasal. Uh, you get that awful thing out of here and tell those fine folk for whatever reason need not be over. Neufarn no longer has disappearing villagers. But it now has no more quests for us. We will need to be on our way. Let's sell that. Let's not purchase that... No, we'll purchase that shield just in case we get to hire a good man or woman at some point in the future. You notice food stocks are running low. Perhaps it is time to camp and go hunting. Armies march on their stomachs and apparently so do mercenary companies. Keep the company's bellies full by sending your highly skilled killing machines to hunt the land for food. Hunting parties can only be sent out while encamped. The more people assigned, the more food that can be hunted. The hunting tent can be upgraded by purchasing a crafting cart from a settlement merchant. An upgraded tent has a 10% increase in hunting efficiency. Additionally, there's a chance that some of the spoils of the hunt, other than food, can be salvaged and brought back to camp. That would be really nice to maybe get some creature parts from time to time. Your company seems to have caught the attention of a messenger on the road. Ah, a sellsword without a role in this world! Woe is ye! Well, Langholtz is not far from here, has got something for you. I suggest you go on to it. Thanking the courier, you check your maps to see if it's worth the trip. Oh, paid work in Langholz? We have no idea what that is. We should have called it the Lost Crusade, not the Last Crusade. <laughs> anyway, we have a glorious crusade. Deciding that Neufarn is a good place to invest your efforts, you decide to offer... Deciding and decide? Okay. In the same sentence. You decide to offer the protection of your company and take up any work suitable to your talents. You act like a gentleman in your dealings with the locals and encourage the men to mind their manners while in the settlement. There was, of course, some griping at first. Hardpert the Builder was sorely disappointed to give up brawling for farmers, especially with the Glorious Crusade spending so much time in Neufarn. But you convince the man that having to a friendly base of operations is important in your line of work, as it means getting better prices in the market and more people willing to join our Glorious Crusade. It's also much less tiring not having to dodge the militia all the time. You've even enlisted the men to do some small tasks in exchange for nothing but goodwill. I found that little brat who wandered off and dragged him right home, Hartbit the Builder brags, quickly outvied by Marius the Crusader. I went to market for that old widower. I s for that old widow woman. I split her firewood for winter and even put out her washing. But I draw the line at getting cats out of trees. Our men are in a greater mood. And we go onwards, to destiny and adventure. Let's at least try and find the next settlement down this road before we end our session. Man, the, the Crusader is um, powerful in a different manner to the Lone Wolf Knight. Nachzerers, you will not escape our blades! We got a Crusader, what can I say? Alright. Hartbert, get up there and try and get a better view of the situation. Forwards! Goes Marius. Often with small groups of Nachzerers in Legends mod, 
as opposed to a normal game, they'll often just hang still and not move until you approach, waiting for you to come up and kill one of them. So that the other one... Ah, there we are. We might be a bit late to the action. Flip a neck. Okay, we're drawing close. There we are. And then they'll get a kill. Yep. Well, we were there for the battle. Don't worry, we get no plunder, but hey, we were there to help. Had they needed us. And this is not the settlement we were told of, but they do have a quest for us. Lothar of Waldane, it should be Valdane, shouldn't it? It's Germanic. Welcomes you into his room and pours you a mug of water. He hands it over with a sheepish smile. I'd uh, offer a bit of ale if I had it on me, but you know how things are nowadays. He takes a sip and clears his throat. Of course, what I've no shortage of is crowns. Otherwise, we wouldn't be having this conversation, right? <laughs> I need you to go to a place by the name of the Ruined Tomb, just northeast of here, and retrieve a relic by the name of the Elder Stone. Pretty simple, yes? This, this no thing, I think it's got to be a Hispanic thing, but it's been infesting English recently. Uh, it's, a, it's a, you like. No, no, I don't tell me that I don't like it, you idiot. You know, it, 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 such questions are always more affirmative. It's like, you like it, yeah? You know, it's, it's like, you like it? No. no that, what? No. It's been going on for the last sort of 15 or 20 years now, and it's starting to get annoying because it gives the impression people don't understand what they're saying. You ask what the relic is good for. The man explains, Oh, the townsfolk pray to it, though they find peace. Through it they find peace. Call for the rains. Bugger their goats, I don't care. Or mate their livestock. They believe in it, and it keeps them motivated. For that alone, it's worth retrieving. Absolutely. A symbol of the local faith, he jingles a bag of coins. This will be yours if you help me out on this. It's 90 crowns in advance, and another 380 when the job is done. We are getting paid really well, and we're only a very basic company. On your way out of town, you pass by the Herbalist Grove. An impressive expanse of colourful flowers and herbs lie before you. Not lay. Lay is more of a verb, but anyway. The surrounding air made almost oppressively antiseptic. You recognise some of the plants. A few of them grow wild in the countryside. You pause to, to make firm mental notes on the various herbs, the smells, the colours, the sheen of the leaves, and the sunlight. Even if you remember a select few, it'll be enough to concoct a few amateur curatives. Cuts, scrapes, bruises, missing limbs, and other body parts, all part of the job. Make sure you always have enough medicines on hand to keep the company patched up and in fighting condition. Brothers assigned to this task will go out and forage for herbs and plants of medicinal quality. The more people assigned, the more medicine gathered. The gathering tent can be upgraded by purchasing a crafting cart from a settlement merchant. An upgraded tent has a 15% increase in gathering speed. Additionally, there's a chance that some more potent and useful medicines will be discovered. We now have gathering unlocked. And we have a quest! Let us attempt to circumvent, circumvent the mire, this slough of despond. Slough's another nice old word you don't get much of most many days. Probably due to the town of Slough. What is it? Come friendly bombs and drop on Slough. It's not worth something, something now. Oh, great. You know what? This could be a one-off. <laughs> Could be a single parter. We might be starting a new company in the next episode. You don't step into the ruins so much as clamber, hobbling over the stoneworks like a bat trying to walk upright. Getting to the bottom of the descent, you find what looks like hundreds of clay pots, old chariots more mulch than wood, and metal water basins filled with rusting shields and spears. Marius the Crusader takes a torch and throws it and throws its glow towards the walls. Great murals run along the length of them, 
great artworks depicting battles you've never heard of. I imagine the artwork being not dissimilar to a bio tapestry in this case. Each step you take seems to unveil another ancient victory until finally you come to a giant painted map. There you see a continent overrun with the rule of an empire, gilded its belly, blackened its borders. Marius the Crusader walks over, the Elder Stone in hand. You nod and tell him it's time to go. When the two of you turn around, there's a man standing with a spear in one hand and a shield in the other. Another figure joins him, and another, their steps hitting the stone floor with metal malice. You yell at the mercenary to run! Run, Hartbert! Run! And both of you abandon the ruins in a hurry, the staccato clap of death marching at your heels. Outside, you wheel around and order your men to get ready for a fight. Before the first sellsword can so much as raise his spear, a stream of armoured soldiers emerge from the ruined stacked formations and level their spears at you. Their lieutenant points a decaying finger and speaks with a voice so gravelly. The words weigh deep in your chest. Damn, I can't do gravelly. My throat's too dry. Hang on. The Empire rises. The false king must die. That's got to be close enough, right? To arms! Let's fight the Manxum foe! Oh yeah, bit of a Lewis Carroll reference there for you. Well, they're going to come to us anyway, so we might as well get ready. Come, The Walking Dead. You are more than a shit TV series. We will face you here in the open! Yeah, that's right. And you get that spear up. No cleaving, we'll go for the other kind. Yes! That was unbelievably good. Must be careful about that. Chunk goes for sword. So the Crusader definitely feels very pow powerful and potent. Yeah, that, that's what happens when I try to say powerful and potent at the same time and settle on potent in the end. Well, you've got the Elder Stone, but at the cost of running into a sort of evil you've never seen before. Armored men, ostensibly dead, yet operating in tight formations. Marius the Crusader holds up the Elder Stone and declares but it is time to return to Lothar of Valdheim. More of these shambling corpses will stand in our way, Hartbert. We shall have a care. For the next time we encounter them, we must be ready. Um, some barbarian frills. That could actually be quite dangerous and it's not a quest and those peasants are hopefully going to see sense and just run away. Let's come and accept the second mission. You find Lothar of Valdain sitting in the town square, his arms up to the skies, his eyes closed, his mouth murmuring prayers. The townsfolk are all around him, kneeling and doing the same. You pick up a rock and hurl it at a weather vane, the clank and rustic spin drawing everyone's attention. You hold the relic up for all to see. Lothar of Valdain jumps to his feet and takes the Elder Stone. The people let, up a, let out a roar of delight, speaking of good things to come. Your payment is handed to you, which truly is what you consider a good thing. The town is in good spirits. No more quests. Ooh, a man and a woman that could be hired. If only we had the company size, which we sadly do not. What we do have though is another level for Hartbert. We can't get him... Okay, so he's not going to be a company stand. No, he's got a fortified mind. Um, steel brow would be good. Slaughterer. Malay kills always are fatalities. Well, yes, they're dead. And I have a minus 15... To, okay, so it's brutal kills that scare people. Would be good were it not for the fact that... Um, we appear to have got the 
Undead Invasion Endgame Crisis. And the Undead can actually have surprisingly high initiative because they get they don't get worn down through fatigue use. So we don't want to take Onslaught. Health and fatigue, smite I'm not sure that would last either. Let's get him some extra health just to be on the safe side. Sprint, that foot looks unhealthy, it looks damaged. Uh, okay. Let's see, mace, hammer, staff, or polearm. We were looking at making him company standard bearer. Now we might have to try and find someone else to fulfill that role. We've got a broken old sword here. Oh, we're not recycling that, no. You know what, you can wear that helmet while it's being mended. But there, I think, I'll leave the episode. I hope you've all enjoyed this one, and I'll look forward to seeing you all in the next one. I'll say bye-bye for now, and cheerio!